Hello and welcome to prompt number 78. Let's just get into it. We have eight ball in secrets. Ooh, secrets. That's interesting. Construction. Here we go. So as you know, during last prompt, I talked a lot about wanting to rediscover my style and that I felt like I was losing my style. So with this prompt, I wanted to focus on a simple yet creative idea where I just focused on drawing something for me and just focused on my style. You know, like less is more. You can definitely get a very powerful idea from something very simple. So I think that's something I want to focus on as well as my style. So my idea obviously was having some sort of someone whispering to someone else. Because when I think secret, I think you don't want a lot of people to hear it. So you're going to whisper to someone. There weren't many ways I could think of to represent an actual physical secret other than whispering in someone's ear. So I thought that was a really good way to go about that. I really like the way I push the shapes in that position on the witch on the second sketch. And I kind of wish I did push myself to do the background, but I'm very happy with the end result for this prompt. So let's get into creating that. So because I did just want to focus on drawing this the best I could, I didn't record the pencil because I just wanted to take my time with it. And I was having sort of an off day. So it was one of those drawings that I took a really long time to finish. I would draw an arm, take a break, draw a leg, take a break, you know, one of those days. It was also one of those days in the sense that I drew this on the wrong side of the paper. I have yet to draw on the wrong side of my watercolor paper and I'm surprised it actually took me this long to even do it, but I did it. And I was really sad and the next day after I had inked it, I tried to trace it over to another piece of paper on the right side, but my hands were so shaky all day and you can even see as I paint it later because I gave up on trying to trace it that my hands were just very shaky and I don't know why. This happens from time to time, my hands will just be shaky for the day. I don't know why, I'm probably dying, aren't we all? But I had tried several, several times to retrace the inking onto another piece of paper, but it was just not turning out well because I could not steady my hands. So I gave up and decided to just go ahead and watercolor the piece on the wrong side. I knew the watercolor wasn't going to act exactly as it should. It's definitely blotchy in areas and it's not as smooth as I would like it. There are worse problems to have and I figured I would just push through it because I was really happy with how the line art turned out. My hands weren't cooperating today and I really just wanted to finish this piece because I was really excited for how it was turning out. I really, I really liked it. I had focused on my style. I think things were turning out really well and I quite liked the concept. Oh, I guess I should probably talk about the concept. So like I mentioned earlier, I really liked the way that there was a princess with a witch whispering into her ear in the sketch at the beginning and in the background you could see like her castle or something. Maybe something mysterious was happening. Was she running away? Was the witch convincing her to do something she didn't want to do? I really liked the backstory of that first one, but like I said a hundred times, I just wanted to focus on something a little more simple. So when I started to pencil this particular piece, I just started off with the girl knowing that I wanted a witch to be whispering in her ear. There was no other plan. Really, I was just gonna have her there whispering. Not much really going on. Maybe I would play with some magic effects or something. But as I was sketching, I thought it would be really cool to have something going out the other ear. You know that phrase, in one ear, out the other, when someone's talking to you and you aren't really paying attention? I wanted something like that. I didn't know if I was just gonna have some spells and magic coming out, but I did think I needed to include that eight ball. At first I was thinking about just putting the eight ball pattern on someone's shirt, just having, you know, eight ball pattern, nothing too creative. But then I got the idea of what if things were coming out of her other ear? So, okay, an eight ball, but why an eight ball of all things? So I thought, okay, well, maybe I'll just make more objects coming out of her ear. And when I think about a magic eight ball instead of like the normal eight ball for the game, billiards, I think my childhood because I'm old and the magic eight ball was one of those, one of those things I feel like that were, you know, a 90s trinket. I'm sure you can still go buy them today. But when I think of them myself, I think childhood because I don't play with them anymore. So I got the idea to have this witch whispering in this girl's ear and out of the other ear, there would be a bunch of 90s trinkets and toys and things coming out. 
What does that mean? I, I don't know. I've been thinking about why the witch would be whispering in her ear and a bunch of 90s things would be coming out of the other ear. I think one of the main things I was thinking of is that the witch would be whispering something like, Do you want to know the secret to remember the 90s? Only 90 kids remember this thing, but I can take you back to the past. Here's the secret to travel to the past. I don't know, something about maybe this girl had lost her memory and the witch is kind of jogging it and she's remembering her childhood. Or like I said, the witch is giving her the secret to traveling into the past and revisiting the 90s in her childhood. Because every 90s kid out there wants to relive the 90s, right? So kind of a weird concept, but I really enjoyed whatever this is. Like I said, just keeping it simple, just enjoying the process. I really like the colors of the characters. So the main thing I really love is, like I said, the colors of the characters. So the main girl in the center, she's got brown skin, she's got this reddish hair, and I love the pink of her outfit. It's just very cute, and I just, I love her overall. So I wanted her to be the focus of the illustration because she is in the center. Whatever is happening is happening to her. So I didn't want the witch to be too overwhelming as far as her color palette went. I thought because she is a modern witch, maybe she would be a little more colorful just to kind of mix it up. I didn't want to be too cliche with witches wearing black, but I thought it would be cute if she did wear black and she didn't take the attention away from the main character. I also wanted to create a gradient in her outfit. So starting at the very top with her hat, she has a black hat. Her shirt is a little less of a dark, less of a dark black. Her shirt's a darker gray, her skirt's a lighter gray, and her shoes are an even lighter gray. And her hair, guess what? That's right, her hair is even lighter. I really liked the idea of giving her silver hair once I had come up with the whole black and gray outfit thing. I thought silver hair would just be really cute, especially for a witch, and I think it just matched so perfectly well with her outfit going from black to gray to lighter gray to even lighter gray, and especially because her hair is up with her hat where it's the darkest, so of course her hair really pops off of her hat. And overall, I gotta say, I just am pretty happy with this. Oh, and if you didn't notice, she has clocks around her outfit because she is a time witch or maybe like a time travel witch or something. I mean, she's talking about the 90s and taking this girl back, so obviously she has something to do with time, right? Once I had all of the little trinkets filled in, I thought it would be really cute to have them encircled by a gold circle. I haven't used my Fine Tech Gold paints in a while, and I think it really needed something to make the characters pop, or at least maybe just frame them or just have them in a circle. It's a very magical scene, so I figured having this shining gold circle behind them would really put an emphasis, I guess, on what is happening. And overall, it just looks really cool. So gold circle background, would recommend. It definitely brings the magic to this piece, and I like it. Plus, like I said, I don't use my Fine Tech Gold paints a lot, and it's really nice to break them out every once in a while. So let me know in the comments, what's your favorite 90s trinkets? Haha, <laughs> only 90s kids remember, and you're all very young. <laughs> Anyways, this is my prompt. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys at the end card. One of our featured artists this week put sumo wrestlers in drag, Aiden Arts. I found your drawing to be quite silly because I've never heard of sumo wrestlers in drag. At least, I think that's what this is. And it was really colorful and I just enjoyed this piece. L, on the other hand, put a crystal chandelier against a sumo wrestler and, well, the sumo wrestler didn't stand a chance. It's dark, but I'm into that dark humor. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.